Aloha kako e komamai. Aloha and welcome to our 15th annual Whale Tale celebration and our very first virtual production of this beloved Maui event. This is the Whale Tales Hub. Here you'll find easy to access links to everything Whale Tales has to offer this weekend. Click on the buttons below to explore the on-demand session library for sessions outside of the live stream and our Keiki Corner just for kids. As you scroll, you'll find the Interactive Expo. These Maui-based organizations and local businesses have prepared educational sessions, art, and storytelling for you. Aloha, my name is Andrew Rogers. I'm the general manager of the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 15th annual Whale Tales event this weekend. We're so delighted that you could join us and share in this magical weekend. E ku kanaloa, stand tall kanaloa, the deity that rises from the deepest sea, from the depths of Po, where peace and harmony reign in darkness. Po, our incubator before life, our haven in the afterlife. I'm Flip Nicklin, I'll be your host for this weekend, and I'm really looking forward to it. it. It's been great the last few months, talking to people around the world, some of them old friends that we don't get to see that often, and a lot of them brand new folks that we're looking forward to know better and know more about the work that they do. Our first presenter is Roger Payne. I have passionately wondered how to explain such a parallelity given how many kinds of sounds there are to choose among. Why so similar? How is it that an animal from which we have been separated so entirely and for such an incomprehensibly long time can cause some human listeners to weep with emotion when it sings? Singers are adult males, most often alone but occasionally not often stationary with their head down and their tail up, but not always, and they sing away. They're spread around out there, you know, maybe a football field or so apart, and they all sing the same song, although not in synchrony. So 2013, in contrast to 2011, it's the year of the greatest convergence of songs across the entire 12,500 kilometers of the North Pacific. That was offset by the amazing footage that we could get looking down the water and see things that you'd never see from the boat. Another whale coming into the area which you had no idea of because this animal didn't surface and there was an interaction and then they would go away. So the drone technology really made it so we could have a more complete view of the world we were looking at. Really, climate change in action. I mean, we're seeing how a change in the plankton that right whales eat, the availability of plankton in the Gulf of Maine has affected where these animals go to feed. Now the Bay of Fundy and south of Nova Scotia have very, very few right whales, and really they're just passing through. And it took us a little while to find out where they were going. Oh yes, and here's another thing the humpbacks are doing in Bermuda waters. Often I would lose a whale in shallow water and couldn't figure out where they had gone. They're having a spa, exfoliating in the sand holes, like Labradors rubbing themselves on the carpet. The grains of sand exfoliate perfectly. This is the basis of sperm whale social structure, what we call the social unit, a family really, of sperm whales. Uh, about seven closely related females and their offspring. Well, the, pro the problem with all of, all of those questions is that, you know, if it was a display of fitness, one would, would presume the female would be paying attention. And they're not. So... Um, Do we know that? Yes. <laughs> well, Jim, oh, now, wait a minute. Hey, now you got me worried. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm sorry. It's, I, I, <laughs> Only and look at Ellen, she's shaking her head, Jim. If there is anything that characterizes every bird species that I've ever watched for long enough to, you know, see what the hell I could of, of this kind of interaction, it's that 
females never look like they're paying attention when they're in the vicinity of, of madly displaying lex a whole a whole lex of males and yet my god are they paying attention and i would be quite surprised if there wasn't some aspect of of fitness being involved with this i i just don't know at what area like are we talking length to go with breath holding are we talking complexity of the song are we talking the males at the forefront of these song changes it there it, it's such an intricate system Since that time, I have become a massive drone advocate. I'm, I'm addicted to the tools and by their potential, and I encourage you to explore them. They're field friendly, they're affordable, they're scalable, and I think the future has better drones, better sensors, and I think these are gonna be transformational tools. The most mesmerizing one to me was watching a young female in labor for three days. I first observed her huge belly from underwater as she was hanging for hours along the reef. She was a blimp. She twisted and turned, rubbed her belly with her pectins like a fleurage, sometimes even smacked her fat abdomen hard. But these complaints were to no avail. The whaling station was built and within three years, they completely cleaned out the Salish Sea of humpback whales. They were gone for about a century until around 2010, when the odd one used to be seen here on occasion. And then uh, over the, the, the last few years, their numbers have really taken off. So Zed keeps coming back to Okinawa almost every year for more than 30 years now. Every year, I hear people are saying something like, did you hear that Zed already came back to Okinawa this year? I don't know what it was, and every whale captain said it was the morning, the end of the mornings. The whales were just going off. There were breaches in almost every direction, with beautiful light, Again, fast shutter speed to freeze every water drop. Captain Steve Lawless, Jim Darling, and I opened up the conference with our exciting, first of its kind, underwater footage of a humpback whale in the process of giving birth that found her again, five weeks and five days later, and identified her by her tail markings. And she had a healthy calf with her. What we are hearing now is that humpback whales are calling from June into the fall, but then they start singing. And what's different that didn't happen 10 years ago is that humpback whale songs, singing humpback whales, are now overlapping in both time and space with singing bowhead whales. A lot of times when you're offshore, you'll see these huge rafts of sea lions and while they look like they're just kind of lounging around, what they're, they're really doing is just freeloading off of humpbacks who are there to feed. And uh, the fun part in the early days is no one expected you'd leave and they didn't expect you to be able to take a picture of a narwhal and anything you got was great. Now yeah. the pictures actually have to be great. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a very exciting time for um, for storytelling in the ocean, particularly. I mean, the cameras have gotten better. We can shoot in low light. Uh, we can do video and stills. Um, everything is a smaller package. And, um, and the science is, you know, leapfrogging ahead. Aloha, aloha. Aloha.